all know that games, every game franchise, except for the Wars as a game franchises, will eventually become dead games. No matter how popular a game could get, a game can become dead. And it is a game that, you know, a game that basically nobody basically plays. There was still a dedicated fan base for these said games, but they're not popular anymore. Examples of dead games would include Doki Doki Wizard Club. Does anyone really play Doki Doki Wizard Club anymore? Yeah, I thought so. So, there was actually like two channels to play Doki Doki Wizard Club on a regular basis. But a dead game or a dead game franchise could get a revival. There's, of course, tons of failed revivals. For example, Mega Man 11. Is an example of a failed revival because people don't have because Mega Man isn't as part didn't get the didn't get a massive popularity spike in terms of the gaming totem pole, pool. But what about revivals or just games that made franchises more popular? We'll be going over we're going to be going over a couple of examples of these games. So a dead game can basically and of course we're not gonna go over the meme the dead games like Overwatch because those memes have been done to death. Number one, Zelda. Zelda as a game series was not very was not as successful as other Nintendo franchises. Despite this, Zelda basically was still a pretty popular franchise, but it was not as big as Mario or Pokemon or Smash Bros. You can really see that with the sales. Ocarina of Time is not really one of, was not really one of the best selling. And it was one of the best-selling N64 games, but this was the sales for the Zelda series, and yeah, this is the Zelda series sales. And most, and with the exception of Ocarina of Time, because it got a remake on the 3DS, and the Link's Awakening was got like ten vote, like two versions of the Game Boy and the Switch. No Zelda game really passed ten million copies. Zelda was not the big seller like Super Mario Brothers was in the other game series, but. Breath of the Wild came out, and it's getting a sequel, but Breath of the Wild already sold 25 million copies. That, that's the first game in the entry, that's the first entry in the series, of course it's getting a sequel, which again, Zelda was not that big of a franchise. Yeah, Zelda games almost hit 10 million copies, and before that, Ocarina of Time was actually the best selling entry in the Zelda series. And then, Breath of the Wild released. When everybody thinks of Zelda, they think of Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is what people think of Zelda. Not, it's again, despite everybody on Ryan Kingdom that Ocarina of Time is the greatest game of all time. If you disagree with me, you're wrong. Say will say otherwise. Most other games have been met with rave reviews, but were not as popular as, of course, Mario, Pokemon, Smash Bros, and the other big boys in Nintendo. And even more recent games like Splatoon and Animal Crossing. Splatoon was a new franchise was more popular than Zelda at that point. But then Breath of the Wild gave the series a much needed revival. Yeah, there are some Zelda games that still don't really sell that well, but Zelda is no longer the two to three million copy of, uh, entry and sometimes that rare system seller we get out of the franchise size. For example, Skyward Sword HD outsold the original Skyward Swords lifetime sale actually had to be 60 million copies. But I think at this point with holiday sales probably outsold Skyward Sword the original version. And that's the most telling thing is that a franchise can be revived. Revived from the dead. Zelda was of course the first example from this. Of course Zelda was not a dead series. There were still tons of Zelda franchises. But Zelda got that much needed rejuvenation and much needed popularity spike to compete with the big boys of Nintendo. I think the main I think the main thing that made Zelda Breath of the Wild Zelda Breath of the Wild stand out, it was because it was a launch style of the Switch and there was no Mario game to to beat it. It was only Zelda. For a month, your only choice on the Switch for a big Nintendo game, of course it was one two Switch, but nobody fuck nobody wants fucking one two Switch. Was Zelda Breath of the Wild? Of course, a month you could have waited a month later for Mario Kart 8 to rocks, but for people, it was Zelda. And you'd think, oh yeah, Mario Odyssey came out. Zelda was gonna sell horrible, because Mario, of course, sells more. But 
Zelda Breath of the Wild is still one of the best selling Switch games to the day. Now we talk about Minecraft. Minecraft's popularity is, you know, strange. Minecraft was really popular in the beginning of this decade. And then, as games go up, as games become less popular, Minecraft became less popular. But the last couple of years saw a spike in Minecraft's popularity. I think there were a couple of factors. One is the pandemic. Minecraft became more popular. Minecraft never really was not unpopular. There were still tons of people playing it. But Minecraft is now still, it's now one of the bigger boys in gaming. Minecraft is no longer was like, oh yeah, I played Minecraft 10 years ago. It's a dead game. Okay, that's basically what Minecraft was turned into by 2015 to 2016 and even early in 2017. My, and of course, the arrival of Fortnite basically made Minecraft even less popular. But 2018, PewDiePie played Minecraft. And that made Minecraft come back from the dead. PewDiePie was its YouTube channel that saved Minecraft from becoming another irrelevant game that, you know, kids still played. Minecraft became more popular because of PewDiePie and, of course, later Dream. And yes, there were a lot of people who hate Dream. But Dream basically revived Minecraft to what it is today. Minecraft's community is now pretty much not as powerful as it it used to be, but it's a pretty healthy community. Not an unhealthy community where it's losing player base. Minecraft's player base is basically currently steady. Steady player base is good for games. And Minecraft is basically like that now. Minecraft is basically like that now. And there's still a steady player base for it. It's not like, oh yeah, Minecraft died. It's a part of my, it's the worst part of my childhood. Like how Minecraft Wii is or a game like TF2. But Minecraft generally got its revival treatment. Next is Halo. This is a franchise that of course a lot of people love. But a lot of people had fears for Halo Infinite. And those fears were pretty understandable. Because... It's made by Free for Free Industries. And we all know how Free for Free Industries handled Halo. Well, well, Halo Infinite is definitely is one of the better received Halo games. Not as much as the first three Halo games, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. Halo Infinite is one of the better selling, might be one of the better selling Halo games. It might, it will, it will probably be one of the best selling games for the Xbox Series X. And also has a really stable and decent PC player base. Now as well. And it definitely got better reviews than the last couple of Halo games released. I'm talking about Halo 4, MCC, and Halo 5. Three games that were very well not received by the Halo fan base. Base. I know it was mostly because of the stalls up for Bungie for Halo 4, but MCC and Halo 5, those were not really well received. Despite MCC being a bunch of old Halo games, it still reads of a ton of glitches and bugs, which still continues to play big modern gaming. But Halo Infinite really bought really the public back interest in the Halo series. Series, basically. And it still has a de- it'll still probably have a decent player base. Here yeah, oh, it has around 20,000 players, which is still much better than the MCC. Yeah, its player base has declined because reasons, even though it's free to play. So, yep. So yeah, Halo Infinite, again, is a game. But again, the difference between Halo Infinite and other Halo games is that most people probably came, played the campaign, and left, which is what the bump in player base is. And mostly it's just people that's playing daily now. Whereas again, that hasn't really changed for the past 40 days. So... Yeah, Halo Infinite's player base is pretty steady, and probably there's a bigger there's a big player base on the Xbox as well. But again, Halo the difference between Halo Infinite and other games is that a game can't be. The, we're talking about the big boys of gaming. The big man of gaming is basically the most popular game at the current time. We all know Halo Infinite was not going to be the big man of gaming forever. It was only the big man for a couple of days couple weeks. Kind of like your typical popularity spikes and falls, like Among Us, Fall Guys, and other games before it. Halo Infinite basically was, yeah, it's still popular. And I think that Halo Infinite is still going to have a decent tough player base, like 10,000 by, by in a couple years. To 15,000. And play, and it might become like Destiny 2 in the future. 
where people just come back the game over and over again, which I think what the developers of Halo Infinite will going are going to try to make the game be like Destiny 2. Next is another series that got a much needed revival, and that's Mario Party. Everybody know a lot of people who grew up in the 2000s, especially had a GameCube, grew up with of course Mario Party, the game that ruined friendships, and of course N64 as well. But Mario Party saw a decline. And that was because of the chains of readership, the chains of ownership, from Hudson Soft to ND Cube. A lot of people hated ND Cube's Mario Parties because they weren't really Mario Party. Mario Party 10, Mario Party 9, Mario Party Star Wars, Mario Party Top 100, and of course the last entry in the series. And when Super Mario Party was announced, everyone was tearing out the teeth, hoping that it would be like the original Mario Parties. Yeah, it was still a disappointment, but because he only got four boards, but it was definitely much better than the last five entries in the Mario Party series. 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 And Mario Party Superstar seems to be a huge success worldwide as well. So really, Mario Party is as popular as it ever been. Mario Party always need, uh, all it needed to do was return back to its roots, and really, that's what people wanted out of Mario Party. People wanted Mario Party to be Mario Party. I think that makes a lot of sense that a franchise must be what it used to be. If people if they, if you take the franchise beyond recognizability, then people are not gonna buy it. No matter how many entries you strap an entry on it. People are just not gonna buy it, and that's probably why they stopped making Mario Parties after Mario Party 10 and stopped numbering them as well. Well, and really Mario Party kept kept getting games of the 3DS, but no one bought those games. So really it was a lose lose situation for ND Cube. I think Nintendo was probably like, you know what, we'll give you one last chance, ND Cube, with Super Mario Party. If you screw this up, we're probably gonna hand it over to another developer. And, yeah. But Mario, Super Mario Party and Mario Party Super Styles definitely brought back the franchise back to its roots. You know, Super Mario, pa Mario Party Super Styles is really just a remake of the first three Mario Party games. 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 The most recent of these revivals is, of course, the series that we all know of, Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's is a pretty infamous series. A lot of people hate Five Nights at Freddy's, and a lot of people love Five Nights at Freddy's. It's a very really infamous series. And they released a new game, like, a couple weeks ago. Actually, it was a month ago already. But Five Nights at Freddy's was definitely on the downtrodden. Yes, games came out, like... Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted. Five Nights at Freddy's AR. But the series was not as popular as it used to be. It did see spikes in games like Sister Location and Ultimate Custom Night, but not near as its original popularity in 2014 and 2015. Most people left the Five Nights at Freddy's bandwagon around 2015, when FNAF 4 came out. Because people were like, yeah, we're sick of these games. Why did you release four games in, four, in two years? We don't know why. Well, yeah, that's really it. But the newest game in the entry in the franchise is, of course, Security Breeds. But considering that the fact that the creator from FNAF got cancelled, I don't really see FNAF really making any more other comebacks past that. Because really, Scott Coffin was the one, was really the creator of my behind the series. But again, and typically when a franchise gets a change in readership, the franchise typically turns worse. All you have to do is ask Halo and Mario Party for that. Mario Party had different developers, the games turned to sit until they realized that we had to stop making city games, same thing with Halo. But Final of Freddy still has a newfound popularity, mostly among the same audience that grew up with the original games, and younger and Gen Z audiences as well. Which is probably why they release a Toy Story movie every decade. So that every audience can have their own Toy Story movie as well. So yeah. And the game is still pretty popular. For that, it be had a resurgence in popularity and now everybody is talking about it again. Even one player's choice on PlayStation. Then, and I bet one by the time the FNAF's popularity dies down, they'll probably port to Xbox and Nintendo Switch as well. A newest entry in the series. Just so you can say, you know what? We'll throw you guys a bone. So, number five, Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot had a new revival around 2017. I don't, Crash is, 
Before that, Crash was basically just a nostalgia character. But the whole Crash and Smash game thing, from now on, on did not happen because, oh yeah, I have nostalgia for Crash in the 90s. That was because, in the middle of the decade, Crash seen a revival. A franchise that was basically considered dead, seen a revival and, still, and even got a mobile game as of 2021. Crash 4 released, Nether Team Racing Field released, and Crash Insane Trilogy being the best song of the new Crash games sold pretty well. Crash 4 sold okay, but it definitely sold better than Mega Man 11. Whereas again, nobody bought Mega Man 11. And we don't know what will, have, what will be the future of Crash considering the Microsoft acquisition. Sin. Maybe Crash will be just thrown away with Panzer Kazooie. But I think Crash can definitely be a certified gaming icon like it was in the 90s. There are still tons of people who grew up in the 90s who still have the stories of a Crash. And there's a lot of newer gamers who played the Crash trilogy, Crash 4, and Nitro Team Racing Field. Field. And they stopped making Crash Bandicoot because nobody bought the games. And Crash 4 did okay. Basically. Cree. And. It didn't really. And again. I think the reason is because the hype behind Crash and Saint Trilogy was much bigger. Why Crash 4 did way worse than the Saint Trilogy. Because the hype was probably much lower than the Saint Trilogy. Because everybody. Because a lot of 90s. Because like. Oh my god. I gotta relive my childhood memories. And that's probably why Crash 4 did worse than Crash. Than the other series. And. This is the IP that, that Microsoft owns. So it'll be very interesting how Crash fails throughout the future. Will Crash's newfound popularity crash and burn like his original popularity? Or will Crash become again a, sta uh, a staple of gaming and continue to climb up the gaming totem pole like every other franchise? Size. And yeah, gaming revivals are... Pretty hard to do. There was, there was way more failed gaming revivals than there were successful ones. Ones. Way more. For example, the Capcom's attempt to revive the Mega Man series kind of failed. And let's not forget the attempts to revive Bubsy the Bobcat, one of the most hated characters in all of gaming. I mean, and then there's a ton of other revivals. But game. But we have one more. Revival for you. Number six. Raise your hand if you ever played Doom, if you ever really cared about Doom before the 2016 game came out. Yeah, the game, the first Doom game was a very important game in FPS history. We're not denying that. But Doom was really a relic of the 90s. And with Duke Nukem failing, people thought, oh yeah, Doom might just fail because Doom is just a relic of the 90s. Nobody's going to be playing Doom in 2016. Well, Doom came out. Yep, Doom came out. And Doom was really successful. For Doom came out in 2016 and became really successful. It was a basically a dead franchise turned into a modern popularity. The, the modern popularity of Doom is basically because Professor said, you know what? Doom is a series that we really... Yeah. Before that, Doom was basically, oh yeah, a legacy of the gaming industry. That's was like Crash Bandicoot. But Doom in 2016 got revived, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see more entries of Doom in the future. Doom Eternal was a huge success for the franchise. Now Doom is as popular as it, as, probably as it ever was. Doom was... I had a decent chunk of popularity in the 90s. When we were woke up Doom, people would find the new games, not the old games. And yeah, the old games still have the cold following here and there. And people who want to who do it from the newer games want to experience how the older games felt and played. And yeah, Doom got a revival in 2016 to 2020. Another type of a potential revival. The potential newfound popularity for a franchise, and that is Kirby. Kirby is a is considered a mid-tier Nintendo franchise, but could Kirby in the Forgotten Land make Kirby more popular than Kirby has ever has? Well, Kirby has a decent chunk of popularity 
the but the games don't really sell as well as Mario and Zelda and Pokemon Sport 2. I think Kirby the Forgotten Land is Kirby's chance to be finally beyond the big boys of Nintendo. It really sees it, it really sees that people will buy the new Kirby game. Of course, longtime fans will buy the game, of course, like of any new game in the franchise, but Kirby will have to attract the new fans. Fans. And again, gaming revivals can happen anytime. There's a lot of dead game fighters that can come back. A lot of game fighters that lost popularity over time or are dead to the studios. For example, we might see a Rayman revival this decade. We might see a revival of Undertale this decade, even though that's an indie game. We might see a revival of Fortnite, even though Fortnite is still an ongoing game. But there might be some event in Fortnite that make like, Fortnite popular as it was in 2018. Heck, Pokemon had a small revival in 2016 of Pokemon Go. Pokemon, again, Pokemon was never unpopular. Pokemon again, like Mario, I don't think Pokemon's ever gonna really die as a franchise. No matter how many garbage games they put out, like your Sword and Sealed and Diamond Pearl remakes. So, that's basically it about this video. Goodbye.